Good morning, friends. Hope all of you are safe and protected from COVID-19. Today, we are going to discuss about the chemistry of glycosides. Let's see the contents, the introduction part of glycoside, its general classification and method of extraction I am going to cover in this topic today. Coming to the introduction part, <clears throat> what are glycosides? Glycosides are one of the important secondary metabolites obtained from various natural sources. These natural sources may be from plant origin, may be from animal origin or may be from marine sources. In general, the glycosides are the conjugation product of sugar and non-sugar molecule. I repeat, conjugation product of sugar and non-sugar moiety. So both sugar and non-sugar moiety combined with each other and form a glycoside. These glycosides have a wide range of therapeutic activity. Some glycosides may be cardioprotective, some glycosides may be laxative, some glycosides may be hepatoprotective and so on and so forth. The sugar moiety, as just I mentioned, this sugar moiety the sugar moiety of glycoside is known as glycone, whereas the non-sugar moiety is known as a glycone. So, glycoside is a combination product of glycone and a glycone. This glycone and a glycone are attached with each other by a bond or a linkage. This linkage is known as glycosidic linkage. Remember my dear friends, these linkages are very fragile and very susceptible for hydrolysis either by enzyme or acids. Another important point, the glycone part is responsible for the therapeutic activity. As in my previous slide I mentioned, the glycoside causes wide range of therapeutic activity, cardioprotective. So the glycone part means non-sugar part is responsible for is cardioprotective activity, whereas the glycone part is essential for the solubility of the drug with body fluids. Second, binding to the tissue. Third, absorption and transport of that particular glycone part to the targeted tissue. Let us see with the structure how it forms. You see here, this is a classical example of cardiac glycoside. This one, the sugar what is mentioned here, this is the glycone part. This is the glycone part. Whereas the remaining entire thing, the remaining entire thing is the glycone part. The remaining entire thing is a glycone part. Now, this glycone part is responsible for the therapeutic activity. So, cardioglycoside means it is a cardioprotective. Whereas, this sugar moiety is important for the solubility of the drug with the body fluid, then transportation of the drug to the cardiac muscle and binding to the targeted cardiac muscle. So these are some important points which I feel students must remember. So there are variety of sugar may be attached in glycoside which include glucose, galactose, mannose, remnose, digitoxose, cymarose, etc. So many if you go through the, their structure, so many different types of glycone you find in their structure. So based on this discussion, if we try to define glycoside, 
So what are glycosides basically? Glycosides are one of the important therapeutically potent secondary metabolite in which glycone and a glycone par is touched with each other by a glycosidic linkage and upon hydrolysis with either enzyme or mineral acid they produce the same. The same means again glycone and a glycone moiety. So that was the uh, general introduction of uh, glycosides. Coming to the next slide that is the classification of the glycoside. Glycosides are classified broadly into two types. First type is based on their glycosidic linkage. Second is based on the chemical nature of a glycone nucleus. Let us see one by one what are those. First is based on the glycosidic linkage. Uh -huh. As in previous structure you have seen already the glycone and a glycone part are attached with each other by a specific moiety. So based on the specific moiety there are different types of glycoside. C glycoside, O glycoside, N glycoside and S glycoside. So in short for remembrance purpose we can write it as cons. Students, please remember it like that. Cons. This is the general formula. C stands for C glycoside, O glycoside, N glycoside, and S glycoside. Let's see one by one how they form. C glycoside. You can see here, glycone is always attached with hydroxy group, with sugar. Obviously, in sugar hydroxyl groups are present, and in a glycone part, C, if C is present, then they undergo conjugation reaction. When they undergo conjugation reaction, then they lose a molecule of water and they form C glycoside. Means glycone and a glycone part are attached with each other by a C atom. That's why it is C glycoside. This type of glycoside is also known as alloin type glycoside. This C bond is the strongest bond. It is less susceptible for enzymatic or acidic hydrolysis. Hence, if anyone needs to hydrolyze them, so apart from acid, they need to add FeCl3 as oxidizing agent. Next is O glycoside. The same type of reaction. Glycone obviously hydroxyl group will be present and a glycone here O OH group is attached. So when they conjugate, they form O glycoside. Glycone and a glycone are attached with each other by an oxygen atom. Classical example is Senna. Next is S glycoside. So here glycone again OH, OH group is present and a glycone. SH group is present, hyal group is present. So, glycone and a glycone part is attached with each other by a sulfur bond. Classical example of this type of glycoside is known as isothiocyanate, isothiocyanate glycoside. The example of isothiocyanate glycoside is sinigrin, is the name of the glycoside and its source is black mustard. So, sinigrin from black mustard. Next is N glycoside. So the N glycoside here again glycone and a glycone are attached with each other by a nitrogen atom nucleosides example. So second part is based on the chemical nature of a glycone moiety means what is the chemical structure first is anthraquinone or anthracene glycoside you can find here this nucleus is anthracene nucleus whereas its oxidized form is known as anthraquinone that's why it is known as anthraquinone glycoside classical example is senna next one cardiac glycoside all the cardiac glycosides are steroidal in nature this nucleus 
cyclopentanophenanthrene nucleus. You can find here cyclopentanophenanthrene nucleus is known as the steroid nucleus. Classical example of such type things are digitalis, squeal and stropanthus. All these are cardioactive glycosides. Next is saponin glycoside. Here you can find pentacyclic glycoside, five ring structure. That's why they are also known as pentacyclic triterpenoid glycoside. Example is licorice, satavari, brahmi. All they contain saponin glycosides. Next, cyanogenic glycoside. Here you can find, here the cyano group is present. That's why it is known as cyanoglycoside. Bitter almond, wild cherry bark, they are the classical example containing cyanogenic glycoside. Example of cyanogenic glycoside present in bitter almond is hemagdialine, whereas in wild cherry bark it is prunacin. They are mainly used as sedative. Isothiocyanate glycoside, already I mentioned, cynic green from black mustard. This is isothiocyanate group. Flavonoid glycoside, this is another very important type of glycoside. See, mainly they are present in citrus fruit. Hesperidine is an example of flavonoid glycoside. Then Kaumarin glycoside, in Visnaga they are present. Aldehyde glycoside in vanilla, they are generally found. Another type is phenolic glycoside, steroidal glucoalkaloid. These are the main different types of glycoside based on their nature of a glycon moiety. Some other types include gentian, chirata, calme, which comes under miscellaneous variety. So this in concludes the classification of glycoside in brief. So next we will move to the general method of extraction and isolation of glycoside. Friends always remember if any glycoside need to be therapeutically active then both glycone and agglycone part must be attached with each other. If they undergo enzymatic or acidic hydrolysis and they separated, the glycone and agglycone parts are separated, then they will no longer be therapeutically active. Hence, this bond glycosidic linkage is very essential. It need to be, must be intact. <coughs> So, the method of uh, uh, extraction uh, was discovered by uh, the two scientists, Professor Stess and Otto, based on their name as an honorium. It is known as Stess Otto method. So, collect the, uh, the crude drug, you shade dry it, wash, and powder into crude drug. Then, this powdered crude drug you place in a soft slat apparatus and you add alcohol as a solvent. So, as we know, soft slate we are applying heat and we are taking alcohol as a solvent. Why we are choosing this? Because heat is applied because heat deactivates the enzyme so that the probability or chances of hydrolysis will be minimized to the maximum extent. Whereas, alcohol also denaturates the proteins. All the enzymes are proteinous in nature. So again, we are minimizing the chances of enzymatic hydrolysis of the glycoside. Moreover, the glycosides are soluble in alcohol. These are the two reasons why we are taking alcohol and applying heat for the extraction method. But remember, this heating should be done below 45 degrees centigrade because most of the glycosides are therapeutically active. If we heat at more than 45 degrees, then there is a probability man due to heat, uh, the glycosidic linkage may break down. You repeat the process and collect uh, uh, and uh, combine the uh, filtrate. This filtrate is a concentrated mass of glycoside. Now, uh, Along with glycoside, it also contains different types of secondary metabolites like tannins, uh, alkaloids and others. First thing, we need to remove the tannins. How to remove the tannins? You apply a saturated solution of lead acetate to the filtrate. Once you add the lead acetate solution, tannin is having a, a property 
From the crude extract, the glycoside are obtained in pure form by performing two process. First one is fractionation followed by column chromatography techniques. Uh, here we are not uh, detailing both the process but after performing fractionation and column chromatography technique, the glycosides will be isolated from the mixture of the compound. Now it is being pu it is purified and subjected for characterization. Characterization means identification of the structure of the compound. This is done by various spectrophotometric analysis which includes ultraviolet spectrophotometry in order to determine the lambda max of that isolated compound which is very specific. Second one infrared spectroscopy or IR spectroscopy in order to determine the functional groups present in the isolated compound. Next mass spectroscopy to determine the molecular weight of that isolated phytoconstituent. Next is enema. Here generally two types of enema has been performed have been performed. Uh, first one is uh, 13C enema, carbon enema, uh, in order to uh, uh, find out uh, how many number of carbon atoms are present in that isolated compound. Second is known as proton enema, uh, to know uh, first of all the how many numbers of proton are present in that particular compound and their positions also. So by uh, looking after uh, carefully uh, checking all the data and comparing with the existing literature the characterization has been performed. So in brief uh, these are the basic concepts of glycoside. Hope uh, I have uh, clarified you most of the extent. Thank you. Thanks a lot.